That was fun. It that was wasn't. not fun. Miss Taz was not a happy bunny. Basically, one of the cameras just did a thing. It did a thing and technology happens, right? I'm just trying to find you on here. We're going to carry on with the demo. Very sorry for the interruption. As we say, technology, it, it did its thing. It did its thing. And uh, But Miss Taz is a little working genius and she managed to fix it, which is all that matters. So we are with the Summer Suit Pursuits collection. If you were with us in the previous half, you would have seen the boards and everything else. We will repost everything so you can watch it as a whole. Uh, but this is just to continue with that demo that we were on uh, so you can at least get to see that sculpting that we were doing. Uh, just a reminder that the Summer Pursuits collection is available on the Carnation Crafts website which is www.carnationcrafts.co.uk under the number 220713. It's 119.99, but we would rather you didn't pay that so please do put in the code CCSP10 at checkout and that will give you a 10% discount for this show. Karen, welcome back. Ah, oh, thank you, Karen. You gotta love technology, right? It's fun. It's not fun. It's never fun. Just so you know, it's never fun. Uh, but it is what it is. Luckily, Miss Taz knows what she's doing. Because if it had happened on me on my own, I'd have just cried in a corner and said I'm not going back. Um, right, let's have a look. Linda, you, you're back. It's very disconcerting. It was very traumatic, I'll have you know. So we have started to build our demo here. You've got your card base, you've got your mats, your layers, and we've got this beautiful vignette. And we were just saying how gorgeous that is on its own. And it, it is, it's a really powerful thing, this one. So if we take a sentiment and we literally just place that through the center, that is a stunning card. That is a stunning card. And that's the power, isn't it? So this is what, I've spoken to Mark and Nick about this a lot. One of the things that I think and it's really hard to reiterate enough with Carnation is if you're an absolute beginner and you've just learned how to put a die on a piece of paper to create your artwork and you've learned how to put your mats and layers together, you're already making, you know, this caliber of card. And that's important because, you know, we, we all start somewhere, right? And uh, for any of you who have ever been on a journey with something, hello, Susan, hello, Linda. Well done, Miss Taz. What would Carla do without you? Are you talking in general as well? Because I'll be totally honest, some of the things she's had to do have been beyond the call of duty. We're just saying. Um, I thought it was the iPhone having a moment. No, look, we don't. We don't actually work with iPhones in here at all. We've got um, proper full setup uh, with with proper big cameras that move and do things uh, and one of them just had a glitch and unfortunately it was the overhead if it was one of the front ones we wouldn't have worried but it was the overhead so you couldn't see what I was doing and that's no good to you for demos so right let's carry on and do what we're doing so we're talking about sculpting and the reason that I love the idea of sculpting with carnation and it's it's that Nick designs, Nick and the team design the vignettes to have cut lines. So the dies have got the cut lines. Hey, oh, me glue stop. So what that means is when we're looking at, just let me get that off there. This is where I normally get Taz. Um, oh, you meant your iPhone. Yeah, no, it was us. It was us. It was us, Annette. We did it. Miss Taz is very angry with the camera. We'll calm her down. She's fine. Um, hi, Karen. It's a very colourful and beautiful shape. So it is really. It looks fluffy. There's something fluffy looking about it. I don't. It's really appealing to me. Is that I love the fact that it's sort of got those really gorgeous circular shapes on it. Um, yeah. So what I was saying about carnation is the fact that you can, as a beginner, come in and do something powerful. But as somebody who is more advanced with cards as well, as you see from the DT team, as well as those of you in the group that actually you then get to take them onto a completely different journey because Nick designs them in such a way that you can take it as a basic or you can actually start engineering and doing different parts with it to make it something completely different. So when we take the die itself and just take a moment, pom-poms, they do look like pom-poms, Teresa. When we take this and look at it and you start looking at the detailing of every single line on here and you can hear it as I pull my little stick down, every single one of those is designed to cut a line within the die. Now I know you all know this at home, I know you've all worked with dies for a long time, or a lot of you have, but 
you don't normally get that level of detail. And the reason that Nick puts it in is specific. So it's not just there to make it look better. It's so that we can do more with it because paper is a material source. And as such, paper can be manipulated. But, you know, I taught you this a lot about when we're sculpting and how the paper can crease. If you break the weave in that paper first, it means that as a, you know, as a crafter, and we are all paper sculptors, as soon as you start making cards, as soon as you decoupage something, you're a paper sculptor. That's where it starts and it builds from there. What it means is when we've broken that weave in that paper, we can start to really manipulate it and we get more, um, more of a focus on how we can manipulate it. So it gives us more power. So when it comes to using one of the vignettes, and I've got this one here, which is one of the decoupage. So this is what I'm gonna go through with you all, is each one of those lines that we've got, those little cut marks. So you might be able to just see, if where's my pokey? If I pop my pokey through this little hole here, so you can come in, see it coming through. I mean, every single one of those, is like that, which means that fiber is broken. There's gonna be a give in that paper because it's not attached to the piece next to it. And so that's why carnation are different because they choose to do that. They choose to make it easier for us. Now, if you're brand new to card making, what I want to show you is, and I'm gonna show you the difference, and hopefully you'll be able to see it on camera. It's quite difficult to see. So I've got these three here. What I'm gonna do is I'll take this one because I haven't messed with it. I'm gonna leave it perfectly flat and I'm not gonna do anything with it other than put some pin flare on it. So, well, actually we'll go first. We'll do a completely flat one and I'm just gonna do it with some wet glue. So we'll take it completely flat and we'll put some wet glue on there and I'm not gonna do anything with it at all. I'm just using the wet glue on it. That's it, full stop. And I'm just gonna place this for the sake of this demo just on here. So we've now got an extra layer on that, so we're building, okay? We're starting to build height. Now, if I take another one and I use pin flare on it, but I don't shape it, and I start to raise this up with pin flare, and I put this one just gently over here, okay? Now, I've got a lift on that. So you can see already there's a change between that one and that one that I've put on flat. We can start to see there's a lift and a change in that dynamic front. Okay, so you can see that there. So then what if we take it that step further? What if we start to use everything that we've got in our toolbox to take a couple of minutes to change it completely up? Then what? Now you can do that with the base vignette as well. So with this, you could turn it upside down and use your ball tool on that and then go into this as well. So it's up to you what you do, but let's take our tools and work out what we're gonna do with them. Now we take a size of ball tool that's appropriate to what we're actually doing it. Daisy says she'd like me to actually see reprinting the download. Can you do that in one of your demonstrations? Thank you. Daisy, we have trouble doing that in the studio because we're not hooked up to a computer and a printer, but I have started to um, build the software in my craft room downstairs so that I can bring you better tutorials. I need to get an overhead camera in there and that's something that I'm doing piecemeal. So when I get to that point, Point and I can get the overhead camera, uh, which should be in a month or two. As soon as I can get that, we'll have an overhead down there as well, and we'll have the better camera visions so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And 100%, I will go through with you the process of printing it, of cutting it, of gluing it. I will do the whole shebang from beginning to end, and I will go through that process with you completely so you know exactly what to do um, and how to do it in the way I do it, and then you can choose how to you know, negotiate that on your own printer and stuff like that so 100% daisy yes I will so because we've got these cut lines we're taking a ball tool that's an appropriate size I could go in with a tiny ball tool but it's going to take me forever and I don't need to do that if I was feeling really fastidious about it I could take the tiny tiny ball tool and I could just shape out every single petal in here would I take the time to do that no and why wouldn't I well because what I would do is essentially make little portions of it raise and they would look beautiful you can already see that's protruding and it would look beautiful but it would also you would start to see the holes coming through because we'd be breaking it down too much so it would look um 
for want of a better way of phrasing it, probably incongruent to what the vignette is. So I'm gonna take an appropriate size ball tool and I'm gonna start working from the outside and I'm gonna start working in. And I say this every time when we're sculpting, but what I'm gonna do with this one is take it just a little bit deeper than I normally would because I've got so many cut lines. So it's gonna give me more scope to do that. So I'm gonna start balling round on the outside first. And I'm taking the time to do this and I'm taking the time to do the edges. I'm ignoring the middle. So I'm just working round all of these places here. Can you see how it's starting to raise in this angle here? That's where my ball tool is manipulating that paper. Now, part of the reason that we go around the edge first is because we don't want it to crease. And if I go straight in the center, I'm putting pressure on this piece. Whereas if I go around the edge, I break the fibers first on the edge because there's nothing attached to this bit. So it's, it's happily breaking. If I start in the middle, I'm trying to break everything around it. So we work centrally uh, from the outside to the central point. And I'm just gonna keep going. So this is how I do mine when I'm at home. I don't normally do this as long on a demonstration, but lots of people have asked for it. So let's get into it. So we're going around the edge here. Now, if I turn this round, you can see, I don't know how well you can see it, but it's still quite flat on the top and you've got this beautiful curvature at the bottom. So now it sits with a little panel as such, but I wanna take it further. I want it to be deeper than that. So where I finished using my ball tool there, I'm gonna start going into the next section. So essentially what I'm doing is working in a spiral and I'm just gonna keep going round and I'm taking my time to do it. And the more time you take, the more impact you're gonna get from what you're making. Can you see how it's really, really starting to curve now? I'm getting that lovely ball that's coming through. And then what I'm gonna do is focus on that central point. And I'm just gonna use my ball tool to really, really work into that because I've broken all the fibers already. So it's not, it's not breaking anything. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not creating a crease. I'm not, um, I'm not destroying the paper because with paper, it ha you can manipulate paper to the nth degree but you've got to treat it sort of with a bit of respect, otherwise it's just going to crumble on you. And so it's learning, work from your outside, work in, and then you can kind of, for want of a better way, sort of way of phrasing it, really kind of abuse the middle of it. You can really go to town on that central point because it'll give now, it has that kind of way of being um, manipulated. So you can start to see, as I'm going through, maybe not from where you're sitting, just here, hold on, let me turn it, just here, you can see where those petals are starting to raise and we're getting that beautiful lift. It's just that little bit of time, just that little bit of extra where we're going in and we're placing. Now what I can do is just smooth out the edges. If you get creases on your edge when, edges when you're working on the center, that's fine. Go back around your edges and just smooth them out. That will make it perfectly within balance again. I'm gonna go back into the center and now I'm gonna go in with a bigger ball tool. So this is why we're choosing the right ball tools for the right effect and it is practice, you'll start to know, you'll realize. But the bigger one is now what I'm gonna use for my central portion. I've got my shape around my outside, I'm okay with it. What I want to do is manipulate the center panel now. So I'm gonna go around from where I had first started and not the edges, but the second row through and now I'm really going and you can see those fibers breaking beautifully in the paper and that's what I want. I want it to break. I want those fibers to give. I want them to give me the room to play. And what that gives me when I turn it around, essentially, I don't know how well you'll see it. Look at that. That doming is so beautiful on that piece. Now, I could not do that if Nick did not put those lines in the die. So when I harp on all the time about how incredible carnation dies are, I'm not talking just about the designs. We know Nick and the team are genius at designing. It's about the extra step that they go that allow me, as an artist, to create. Nick didn't do that, I did. You know, when you get home and you did it, Nick didn't do it, you did. Yes, you're using his artwork, but what you're doing with it then is making it something else. And that's what makes it unique to you. And that's what gives its individual power play. So this has got the most beautiful doming on it. It's really, really pretty. Now you've got choices at this point. So you can put foam tape in here. You need to make sure the depth, I don't know how well I'll be able to display this. Let me put it this way. So if I just hold that, there's a depth. So where this portion is here compared to the inside of it and my edges here, there is that bowl, okay? I need to level it. 
So whatever I put on the inside here has to be level with those edges here because if I put something in that is narrower than that, I'm going to have to squash all the work I've done to get it to stick so it'll span out. And I don't want it to do that. I've just taken all that time. And this is why pin flare is your best friend. Because with pin flare, you build it. Foam tape, it's already built. Uh, you know I love my foam tape. I'm a massive fan of my foam tape. And I love the fact I can get different heights. But when I'm doing something like this, it's different. Pin flare is going to allow me to build a level height with those edges there. So my doming does not change in any way shape or form so I'm going to take my pin flare and I'm going to fill that bowl that's how I sort of view it and I'll take it ever so slightly higher but I never put my pin flare to the edge and the reason for that is because I'm going to have to squash it down a little bit so I've raised it higher than the level of my edge can you see? So this is here, my edges are here, and that's going to give me a little bit of a squash down because I've got to get it to stick to the piece that's underneath it. So it's important that you have that extra panel. So all I'm going to do here is just place this over and just very gently, I've got shaky hands, I do apologise, just manipulate it. Now your pokey tool comes in here because if, I, if I'm just gonna play with this too much, the weight of my fingers is gonna squash it. And I don't want that to happen. I want that lift and I want that dome in. So what I'm gonna do is manipulate it with my pokey. This is how I craft when I'm at home. This is what I do when I'm doing it. So all I've done is a tiny little shelf and that's gonna allow the two pieces to adhere to each other without ruining the pin flare that I've put on. Now obviously it's important for me at this point then to wait 24 hours to let it dry with concrete, but that's, that uh, it's worth it. it. The juice is worth the squeeze. It's absolutely worth it. Now we've put three on here. This one's flat. This one is just raised but with no ball tool. So you can see how we've got this flat edge that sits here and it's not as pretty. Whereas this, I've created this beautiful board, this beautiful dome. Can you see the difference? We've got flat, we've got just flat, flat raised, just a decoupage element. Take it that one step further. Look at that. Now remember when that's dry, it's not going to move. It's not going to move. That's exactly where it is. That's why your ball tools are important. This is why I ask Carnation to bring ball tools out because the power of their dies is such that I can manipulate to the nth degree and I love it. So what I'll do is just finish this off with a couple of elements uh, just so you can sort of see an end result. But more than anything in this, I wanted to show you the power of the die, the quality that you're getting, because that's carnation to a T. It's everything they do is about quality. If you sit and talk to the team, that is always the word they use. We will not bring anything out that is not the quality that we expect. And I respect them for that so much. I'm just gonna place this into the center, like so. Look at that prettiness. Look how these colors blend. So the yellows here that you see are the yellows here. The pinks that you see here are the pinks here. So nothing clashes. We don't have any clashing. Carnation, do not clash. It's not in the name of the game. I'm gonna put a couple of butterfly wings on here. Just get a tiny little bit of glue, she says, and daubs a whole load on. And using my pokey again, I'm gonna base it out. So I'll place it about here and I'm going to use my pokey to push that down because I want the lift of my butterfly wing. Now what you can do with your butterfly wings again is obviously you can put some shaping into them. You've got to remember from the beginning which way it's going to go round. So what I'm going to do is just place through, I'm using an appropriate size ball tool, I'm following Nick's shading line and I'm just giving this a gentle little push. I'm not trying to make a dome with this, I'm just a gentle little push so that when I turn it over and I pull it forward those little butterfly wings will have the most beautiful shaping on them. And I'll push this down, same way I did before, with my ball tool. Ball tools are, not ball tool, sorry, pokey tool, are little wonders, aren't they? Sorry about my hand in the way there. Look at the prettiness coming together there. Isn't that so sweet? And you can pop a little sentiment on, you don't need the sentiment, you've got enough detail in there. But let's put one on for those of you who love your sentiments. And I'll just pop it at the top, baste it out, and I've got those beautiful little wings. 
they could probably do to be a bit more symmetrical but you can get the gist of what we're doing here. The main thing I wanted to show you on this demo is the difference between decoupage and how it can be taken to the next level because for me on the crafting journey that you're going to go on listen if you're going to invest in carnation learning how to use the dies in more ways is absolutely worth it right because everything we've just learned there goes back to the first ever collection that you might have bought from carnation it's the same thing it's exactly the same thing so we can change and you wouldn't do that necessarily for every single card and that's okay it's about using it in the ways that are appropriate for the card that you're making it but it gives you more scope so you've got three different ways there of making a card three different ways using exactly the same vignette using exactly the same die the only difference being is we took a ball tool and we changed it up so that's three different ways of decoupaging three different ways of crafting so I really hope that helps somebody out there I hope it helps um, kind of see where I come from with carnation why I'm so passionate about them I am a paper sculptor I love them uh, and I think they just do a fantastic job. So big shout out to Carnation, massive shout out to you guys because you are the best support in the world and I appreciate you endlessly. Huge shout out to Taz who sorts out me and the cameras and I will speak to you really, really soon. Take really good care and have a lovely day.